Hello and welcome back to Forts and the Forts Pro League Season 2, where we're kicking it off today with Team Pro Aim here on the left hand side. Helicopter and MCC are playing as the Armadillo Commander, a commander that is, well, somewhat more defensive than most, allowing them to construct cheaper metal so they can get more metal than most. And it also has fast opening doors, which is kind of a fun little bit that has been added relatively recently and, well, dramatically raised the popularity of the commander. But today they'll be facing off against their opponents, Ran Sivaglasher. Also playing as the Armadillo Commander, this will be a mirror match where each team will be given, well, has elected to have the option to be a little bit more defensive. And well, let's see what they're doing with it. Here we have De Bensi and Rigger, looking like they're not doing anything exceptionally rushy with it or extraordinary. Each t player from each team getting these nice, delicious, and uh, very difficult to destroy rear-facing wind turbines. As one of the joys of playing on the balls map, you have easy access to the rear side of the ball, and thus an incredibly defended position. Although it does seem that they are saving up cash. We'll see rigor at maximum metal capacity. They can very quickly place down an expensive technology. It looks like they'll be going with the laser beam option as they're getting the laser production factory. Similarly, we see De Benzine going with the munitions plant for the cannon tech. As their opponents, MCC on and uh, Helicopter on Team Pro Aim are going a little bit more economic. Both players choosing to spend their earlier money on investing into additional resource and economic opportunities, expanding to the other ball islands, the other islands across the uh, across the map, before investing into the next level of technology. Although each player has started to invest into technology themselves. So in this particular match, we will see uh, pro aim with a stronger economy than Rensiver Glacier, but in exchange, Rensiver Glacier will be uh, be able to field weapons sooner than their opponents. We'll see how that works out for them. It looks like we do see Derbensian here getting some additional storages. This is indicative of going for the Howitzer tech, specifically the Howitzer weapon for the uh, cannon tech tree as otherwise you don't need additional storages to get standard cannons. Rigor here also getting additional storages, indicative of them getting the plasma laser. So we're going to see the heaviest of the weapons coming out from Team 2 with a relatively quick speed. As opposed to Pro Aim who's a little bit behind in the technology, but far, far ahead in the economy. As here we see four mines on the expansion compared to Rigor's one mine on the expansion. That makes a big difference. Like, it really, really does make a difference. And think about it this way. Helicopter could expand up here as well to get additional mines on this particular floating ball. A few snipers going each way. A sniper for each player, but nothing of consequence has happened just yet. Uh, one thing worth noting. The upgrade sensor for MCC is important because it's expensive. A player who has built an upgrade sensor could have instead built something like a cannon or invested that money most other places and gotten a uh, immediate, almost immediate value out of it in terms of pressure. Let's say an upgrade sensor instead of a howitzer would be a big deal. So we do see MCC investing into building taller rather than building weapons. A little bit more of an economic investment there. The upgrade center I can only imagine is for upgrading mines and such. Potentially the upgraded flak for the defensive option. We do see a buzzsaw out of helicopter here. A little bit of toying around their opponent but nothing of consequence. At least not yet. There's always the option for Buzzsaws to do something crazy. A beautiful shot does actually disconnect Rigger's trunk, the expansion down to the island. The island, while important, is not critical toward their strategy at this stage of the game. Rigger already has both their plasma and their fire beam online, or at least about to come online, which is the standard fire beam plasma beam combo. You know it, you love it, it's very popular, and for good reason. Helicopter actually very well known for using that combo themselves. 
quite the um, adept aimer with that. Here we see the difference in timing between Pro Aim and Red Sea Rebellion. Whereas Pro Aim's first howitzer is about one third complete, compared to Durbensin's, which is already complete, and the second cannon is just a few seconds away from completing itself. So we will, at least we should, see the opening volley come from Team Red Sea Rebellion. Albeit that uh, opening volley could have happened already. Oh, well. Yeah, no, they're, they're sitting there waiting for a. Uh, more appropriate time, it would seem. And now is the appropriate time. Cutting deep. A howitzer with a cannon follow-through. Does some damage to MCC's core. 20% damage, to be exact. Bringing it down to 80% total. As we're about to see some substantial amounts of uh, firepower flying from both sides. Especially from Renzi Rukulaisher's side, as it will take some time for Pro Aim to catch up in the firepower department. Standard cannon. Out of helicopter. Second standard cannon. Trying to focus their fire into the weapons quadrant of, uh, of Rigor up top. Looks like there's not a whole lot of focus firing happening here between the teams, which is not terribly surprising given the map itself. Helicopter's second cannon, the upper one, taking a very, very heavy hit. Knock blowing out the cannon entirely, knocking him down to one cannon as the howitzers are flying once again. The question is, as, if I'm playing as Dubensi, where do I shoot this howitzer? Because I don't actually know. This uh, buzzsaw is a great choice. It's, well, that's awkward. The buzzsaw is a great choice because it destroys the background racing. For those who are unfamiliar with howitzers, howitzers do actually collide with background racing, so it can be used as a uh, howitzer shield without blocking other things. As we see here, the howitzer detonated before making impact at the doors, meaning these doors do actually survive. Despite the, uh, the howitzer cannon exploding almost directly on top of them. The buzzsaw is, of course, capable of chewing through that background bracing and wood as a whole. This lets it clear the way for the howitzer to actually get some real damage dealt. That is a lot of buzzsaw. Durbensi now relying on his lower ball to hold up his main base, which is not usually how you want that to go because a single buzzsaw could do... The buzzsaws are notorious for disconnecting them. Ooh. Yeah, that's, that's a little rough. He's, uh, having a rough go of it out there. Whereas Rigor is largely unaffected by Helicopter's single cannon. Oh. Ooh. If that had impacted the wooden struts instead of the metal, this, mi this game may look very, very different right now. And I think, I think MCC knows this and is hoping to prevent it from happening. A beautiful shot. Looks like MCC has uh, smelling blood in the proverbial water, as all those buzz sauce from above have caused massive deformation on Durbensin's base, and they're trying to hit that same spot. Oh, yeah, there it is. Clean through. Proem loses their howitzer, which is uh, extremely painful for Team Proem, as that leaves. MCC specifically, completely devoid of weapons and offensive firepower, which is just painful, as Rigor failing to cross the beam still does a bit of damage. Fire beam is strong. My question is, does Derbenstein try to go for the kill? Do they try to sh completely shave off uh, MCC's lowermost ball here? Looks like going for the kill is the, is the attempt. Shotgun defending the defending against the howitzer, which was nicely aimed, by the way. You guys, that's a perfect example of how the buzzsaw does does well. It clears out that wood spam in front, letting the howitzer go clean through, which would have gone clean through if it wasn't for this now martyred shotgun. Double cannon out of helicopter. Two cannons is good. Uh, three cannons is better, especially in this case. Looks like MCC got 
forward uh, forwards MCC's forward defense has got penned here leaving some splash damage onto their core bringing them down to 63 percent a few more hits like that and MCC will start really feeling the pressure albeit the upgrade center starting to really kick in as they are finishing up the last two upgrades to their mines. Oof. Almost. Almost. Yep. Hey. MCC taking some more splash damage, but nothing of significance. As it stands, Rigor doesn't quite have enough doors to full defend against the double cannon if those two cannons out of uh, helicopter managed to hit the same spot. So Rigor is not safe right now from those cannons, but the cannons are quite inconsistent at this range. Oh my. That is a direct hit onto the core from the plasma. And uh, the core did not die. That's um, extremely unusual. Typically the plasma does enough damage, but there was just enough wobble, just enough defense and armor in front of that core to keep it alive this time. And only knocking off 15% out of helicopter. That's concerning. Okay, well, now these helicopter knows that's a weakness. And it seems to be working to fix it. Because I think... I th think Rigor realized that Helicopter is now fixing that particular hole in their defense and is swapping to a different target hoping to um, Hoping to get m some more damage done as Similarly MCC is just in the pain train as well Although a little bit more worse for wear MCC is still in the game But doesn't have weapons of their own and is looking to try to, to, to fix that because uh, well it's currently helicopter versus the world, and that's not the kind of world you want to be in if you're Team Pro Am. A beautiful howitzer around. That's some good damage. Taking out a shotgun and a whole bunch of, uh, well, just a chunk of the base in the process. Mind you, that it can be relatively easily replaced. So good damage as it may be, it wasn't something permanent. Uh, looks like Team Red Savior Glacier is focus fi focusing their fire a bit more. Trying to take out the lowermost ball here and uh, balls 2v2. We finally have a howitzer placed for for MCC here in this lower element, which does not seem to be a significant target. At least not yet. I think I think Derbensin hasn't recognized that this is a weapon and plat platform, but that may very well change here. As so many laser beams all into the same spot and achieve nothing. Just caught entirely by helicopter's armor. Now, my question is, where does Rensiever Glacier focus next? Looks like they're still going straight to MCC's core. They are getting more damage. MCC is now down to 42%, so slowly but surely that splash damage is adding up. But Pro Aim is doing a very, very good job of just taking these hits and mitigating the damage they've received as the snipers are slowly coming around. Looks like Rigger's doing a lot more expansion here. About ready to bring those, uh, those missiles online. They've got the snipers up. All they need to do is fire them. Although, it looks like... Are they saving for the uh, nuclear upgrade? Oh boy. The 20 mil getting sniped out. Well, that's awkward. The door snipe goes a long way. Helicopter to save the day. Although helicopter is not having a great day of their own. They've lost three mines up top, which is painful. Very painful. But given that they still have access to the lower ball and they've spent so much time investing in their economy, it's not game ending for helicopter. It's just good old fashioned painful. And if wouldn't you know it, getting getting ahead in the early game is quite quite a good strategy. Despite pro aim just categorically having a stronger eco than than Rent Silver Glacier. Um, <laughs> Rensiever Glacier can do whatever they want, including expend extra t 
extra income on their own economy and get more weapons. Whereas Pro-Am can't really do much about it. I didn't even manage to keep that one howitzer alive, although that's not a surprise given the amount of firepower coming out of Durbensian. At pe deep penetration out of that laser beam. Snipes out of mine and a couple turbines, but nothing that's going to be massively game-changing just yet. Mind you, helicopter can't keep taking hits like this. This is gone into a war of attrition, and helicopter's not, not in a good position anymore, to say the least. It's just... It's a whole lot of damage, and it's adding up. Slowly but surely, it's adding up. And there goes another one. Another turbine and another mine goes away. This actually puts Helicopter in an incredibly dangerous position. Helicopter only has two mines remaining, which is... not enough to do much of anything. We do see that wall of buzzsaws being destroyed, but not before it did actually manage to push into Dubensian once more. Oh boy. Well, that's unfortunate. MCC taking yet another hit. And did you fire your plasma? There it is. You get one more plasma round. No, it doesn't have the battery for it. Okay, it looks like... It looks like Rigor here is not going to fire their swarms at all. Has instead opted to upgrade them straight to nukes, which is, you know, that's fair enough. Rigor is going to be suffering energy production issues for some time. In an interesting twist, we are actually seeing helicopter being taken apart methodically by lasers of all things. Typically, it's cannons that win the war of attrition. But in this instance... The lasers have just managed to snipe out all the important things, namely the weapon systems and the uh, economy, and that's left Helicopter without the ability to really do much other than slowly bleed out. Mind you, Helicopter does have a uh, pretty heavy reliance on energy shields right now, which also cripples Helicopter's energy income. Like, that's, not, that's neither cheap nor particularly affordable. It's Rigor is investing in additional lasers, bringing three more lasers online, which is kind of a lot of laser. Rigor absolutely does not have the energy income to field all of this. That's six laser beams and two nukes on ten turbines, not even upgraded, which is... that's not enough. That's not enough and by a lot. If you guys ever remember our battleship matches, <laughs> Rigor desperately needs something like a battleship size turbine platform, turbine box to fuel that kind of firepower. Isn't quite there just yet. At least they do have some redundancies in case they need it. Ooh. Disconnect, but nothing of consequence. A 20mm to soften things up. Standard cannon pushes in. Oh boy. How it's your time? Probably should have opened with that, but it does enough damage to just straight disintegrate that shotgun. The nukes are launched, and with no anti-air anywhere, both of them get ignited. Massive damage. Surprise Cataclysm, Helicopter goes down. Now, both players are going to be focusing on MCC here. And MCC, gonna be a little bit harder to crack than, uh, a little bit harder to crack than Helicopter, but this is an incredible amount of firepower. And, um, I, I think Ren is not gonna be, not gonna be too beat up about that, you know? And we're off to round two, where here we have on the left-hand side, it is Team Pro-Aim. Pro-Aim, again, playing as the Armadillo Commander, with those extra defenses and uh, 
faster opening doors is just quite a good, like, fundamentally solid commander. You can't go wrong with it. It doesn't do anything exceptionally well, but it does, it does keep you alive and gets you all the things that you really want. I mean, even the faster opening doors can save you in so, so very many instances. They'll be playing against their opponents, Renseever Glasher, who went up one in this best of three last round, winning their last match. Or at least the last round in this match. Uh, looks like they're going for a similar rush as last time, except this time they're playing as the Pinch Fist Commander. Pinch Fist Commander, you know it, you love it. Quite popular, very, very, <laughs> very well known. Uh, because it allows you to gain additional income whenever you sell something, or more accurately, you get full income back whenever you sell something. Typically, when you sell something, you only get a percentage back of it, but but with Pinch Fist, you get 100%, which means you can literally sell off everything in your starting base and bootstrap your build order, whatever it may be, to get additional income in the early game and use that additional income either to, uh, well, invest more into your economy or to invest more into technology. This is why you see a lot of Pinch Fist bases that are just skeletal or otherwise devoid of everything. You can see this repeated on uh, both players here. Mind you, it looks like Rigor is going for a Howitzer Rush, whereas Durbenzin is going for a Laser Rush. We'll see some pretty pretty quick timings on those. Compare this to Team Pro Aim, who is substantially further behind in the Technology Rush, but does have access to a bit more. Oh, why are you like this? A battery in front of the core. What? Okay, you know what? Batteries go next to the core. We all know this. I do this every time myself. I can't judge. Who am I to judge? Either way, we do see Helicopter already has an upgrade center down. Uh, typically, an upgrade center this early means that you're either playing as Architect and looking to abuse the Architect ability. Abuse? Use is a strong word. Looking to use the Architect ability to um, boost your tech tree along a bit faster. Or you're going aggressive. Um, given that neither of those things are happening, Helicopter is just using it to invest into their mines and economy investment way harder and earlier than you would typically see in something resembling a standard build. As we see MCC doing what is akin to a laser rush, but a little bit less rushy. Certainly less rushy than uh, Derbensin's rush here. We see both. We see two lasers down for Derbensi, just over a third of the way completed compared to pro aim here is just it's not the same level of progress like at this point Renseever Glass just has more stuff than MCC which is not a surprise because the joy of pinch fist is pinch fist uh, gets to boost their early game gets to boost their build order a bit faster of course this does come at the cost of defenses as we see Durbensi is slowly working on their defenses here compared to Helicopter, who's already investing into anti-howitzer defenses in the front of their base, and, uh, well, MCC is, uh, kind of thick and chonky already. We've, we've been there. We know that. We've seen this one over. This is a story we have seen several times. Now, Helicopter as of, has yet to develop any form of offensive weaponry whatsoever. I think this is likely by design, uh, that is to say, they've elected within the team to say, hey, helicopter's going to be team tank, or more accurately, their sole purpose is going to um, be survive the inevitable howitzer from, their, from the opponents, and then let, let MCC do the actual damage, which I think is a reasonable strategy. Uh, mind you, Renseever Glacier is just looking to blow them up, because they can. As here comes the first howitzer out of... no? Okay, they decided not to fire. Uh, worth noting that uh, Pro-Aim lost one of their lasers. It got... I, I don't even think it got door sniped, I think it just got shot directly. Either way, it went down. That has to be rebuilt, whereas Rigger should be looking to open fire here in a moment. The follow-up cannon has come online. Oh, well, that's just devastating. And you, they totally, they totally did that on purpose. 
Like, that was not an accident. I can almost guarantee you that was not an accident. That was very, very much so on purpose. As here we see the fast opening doors coming in clutch for helicopter. Here has uh, shot that first how it's around out of the air. Buzzsaw just strong is what it is. At this point, Rigger just has to just keep firing because there's nothing else to do. Like, he doesn't have a cannon to follow up. There's n really nothing to do except fire the howitzer and probably have it get shot down by helicopter who's already invested quite substantially into anti-howitzer defenses. you love to see it. Shotgun. Oh, that might... That's going to prompt Rigger to fire. And bait him right into the second shotgun. Don't you love how that works? Helicopter playing mind games on top of it. You love to see it. Uh, worth noting that the buzzsaw snipe of that of that cannon from below actually brought Rigger down to 59% as the cannon was fairly close to Rigger's core. It was deep inside the internals. And um, the secondary explosions almost took Rigger down to half health, which is kind of kind of worth noting. Um, it's likely the reason why this lower expansion exists now, because Rigger doesn't want to have a follow-up. Howitzer Clash! It's not something you see very often unless you're in like a Dragon Ball Z novel, Kamehameha-ing each other at the same time. Howitzer on Howitzer Violence. And she'll love it. Alright, you can do it. And fire burning through the weapon systems, but shouldn't do anything critical. But saw uh, searching for something to disconnect, but doesn't quite do it. This time, Rigger, Rigger did that one on purpose. This was, that was clearly intended to shoot down their opponent's howitzer, because, well, I guess what else are you going to do with your own howitzer if, um, if it's being blocked by multiple shotguns? Oof. Helicopter's investment into economy early has truly paid off. Rigger completely and utterly unable to deal damage to helicopter, so they've been sitting there with all those extra upgraded mines. And now they're starting to return fire with helicopters, howitzer, and two cannons now coming online. Uh, Rigger's in a world of hurt. He's going to need some fairly substantial anti howitzer of his own. And, uh,. Or they're just, or Rigger's going to explode terribly. Uh, team Rancia Beglasha has been entirely unable to deal any notable damage to Pro Aim whatsoever. The defensive play out of Pro Aim has been at top notch, and it shows. All right. So as it stands, <laughs> Pro Aim still has it. Still hasn't invested into, or still hasn't shown an interest in getting aggressive. They're just waiting. And I guess, why not? Like, you don't particularly need to get aggressive. EMPs exist. Uh, I suppose no reason for them not to exist. Uh, we should have a double cannon follow up, which will likely break Rigger entirely. Yep, there it goes. Check and mates. And there you have it. Uh, Team Pro Aim has finally reached the stage where they have everything they need to break their opponents with a single alpha strike, and they are doing that exactly. Uh, Derbensin, I'm not entirely sure what the Magda Beam is for, other than either just to have some fun with it, or maybe trying for Hail Mary. It is possible to use a Magna Beam to... Um, redirect your opponent's cannons, or at least the howitzers, into dealing devastating damage to themselves. Um, 
I think that wasn't exactly what they were trying for, given that the uh, howitzer was not ready to fire. And their Bensi concedes. And we're off to round three in this best of three. Here we have on the left hand side, it is Team Ransiever Glasher. Going one to one in this best of three, Ransiever Glasher is once again playing as the Pinch Fist Commander. Pinch Fist known for its, well, early game rushes and skeletal bases. With their 100% resell value, they will be selling off significant amounts of their base uh, and re reapplying those resources into. Um, more appropriate early game developments such as additional technology or well economy looks like we do have a very quick laser rush coming out of rigor and a cannon rush coming out of Dervenci. whereas their opponents on the other hand team pro aim have decided to make this a mirror match playing as pinch fist themselves they will be doing the exact same thing although they do appear to be going for more economic focus of things. They're doing an economy rush, I guess is a good way to describe it. We already have an upgrade sensor on the field, and we're going up to six mines apiece, which is quite a lot of mines. So while Pro-Aim is rushing out economy, Rancivir Glacier is rushing out violence. And we've seen how well that works, which is usually pretty well. Um, there's a reason why Pinch Fist is notorious and kind of sort of hated by the community because there was meta for so very long that it, uh, really really got stale and old because it's just rushing out weapons and map control is just kind of a good strategy so we, we do see that all the time uh, this is very very popular that is a lot of damage okay close but not quite pro -Aim doesn't quite snipe out that mine although almost gets it You've seen this happen a fair few times, but uh, when something is under construction, it cannot be repaired. Uh, which, oh jeez, well that's just annoying. Well, rip turbines for Rigor. That's painful. It's exceptionally painful given that Rigor's going for energy weapons, which relies so very heavily on energy production. Buzzsaw is hitting in the wrong place at the right time could just do a great deal of damage. Now, my question is, how exactly are MCC and Helicopter looking to finish this out? I think this EMP is a great decision out of Helicopter. Applying any amount of pressure and delaying action against Van Gleischer is, uh, kind of sort of very important because pro aim invested so much into their economy in the early game that not slowing down their opponents is going to result in a catastrophe for them similarly owing to Rensiva Glacier's choice of pinch fist uh, pinch fist is expected to have less e e defenses until they're absolutely needed and therefore pinch fist tends to be a unusually vulnerable to early in mid game style harassment so something like this EMP something like this shot going or even rockets you would expect it to deal more damage against a pinch fist player than against most any other player which makes this uh, consistent EMP play a little bit more enticing than it would be under most other circumstances We do actually see the heavier weapons for Pro Aim coming online soon, uh, but not quite as soon as we see them coming online for Rensiever Gleischer. Although that can be adjusted as the EMP halts the construction of the weapons, as we see this fire beam is no longer in production. That actually does the EMP has actually done enough for MCC's fire beam to come out before Rensiever Gleischer, despite. Pro aim focusing on economy before technology and weapons. Which is just. that describes this match. that really puts this match into some perspective. Because when you invest so heavily into economy and early game investment, as opposed to, well, the heavier weapons, and you still get the heavy weapons out, that 
that shows you can have your cake and eat it too if played right. Or more accurately, you can steal your opponent's cake, which is kind of what kind of what Pro Aim is doing here. I think more accurate to what they're doing here. Okay, so a couple things happened there, and that would have been way worse for Helicopter if if Rigger didn't take that heavy hit. Um, but the door snipe on Rigger's weaponry caused their entire base to recoil and take out a chunk of the base. Uh, but the recoil of the base did actually splash that laser damage around, and it only broke one element of Helicopter's base as opposed to penetrating and possibly bringing the whole thing down. Ooh. Over penetration, Derbensi takes a heavy hit, loses every single one of their turbines. While Derbensi is using cannons rather than lasers. Well, that's interesting. Buzzsaw Ansier, you don't see that every day, but it is notorious for working against howitzers. Oh my. As I was saying, um, cannons, not the most energy hungry thing, so things like howitzers can be fired without, without using any, uh, without requiring the use of your turbines, but, uh, it dramatically reduces your fire rate, and you desperately need to get those back if you intend to upkeep or at least expand upon your firepower, which is something that Derbensi needs to do. We do see those turbines coming back online. Uh-oh, that's an exposed fire beam, and Pro-Aim knows it. Kind of surprised to see no sniper follow-up. So here comes a 20 mil. Just generally sending a message over to toward Pro Aim's direction. No anti air? Oh no, there is anti air. I didn't notice that. The shotgun is still alive. Oh ho ho, no! Rigger falls a door snipe to his own weapon. Oh my. A beautifully placed energy shield. That was devastating. Well done, helicopter. Playing billiards and, well, aiming. So good at aiming, he can use his opponent's weapons to do it for him. That was that was very well done. Derbensi immediately claiming Rigger's destroyed base. Not much of it left, turns out internal explosions rummaging through your base. Um, go on a bit of a rampage and destroy everything. But does manage to... Oh, jeez. They really don't like Derbensi having this base there. They're trying to break him. I'm probably still alive, only owing to the stability tech. Very well done, the cheap and easy version of it. But the additional income from Rigor's destroyed base should help keep Dubensine in this game. Mind you, um, they're going to need more than just four mines. As four mines in total, uh, the bonus four mines for Dubensine doesn't keep up with the additional upgraded mines that Team Pro Aim has. So Dubensine is still behind in economic power. That's not to mention the lack of turbines, at least because every single one of Rigor's turbines went away. Oh my. Exposed EMPs? Yeah. Alright, well that was painful. Buzzsaws again being a menace. Well done. And Seabook Lysher just trying to hang in there. Derbensi needs to be firing their weapons. I believe they agree. Uh, well. I guess there's the end of that. Looks like MCC was uh, waiting for that howitzer to fire, just sitting there on, on the weapon and uh, waiting for the door to snipe. The moment that howitzer door opened, it got penned by laser fire. And um, that that's just kind of the end of Dubensine's weapons. Dubensine's got nothing. I mean, they still have the technology, so they can rebuild the weapons. But trying to rebuild the weapons in this context, 
I mean, I'm not going to say it's a mistake. It's just not particularly easy to do. You know? Um... I, I really think Team Pro Aim here is not going to let him do it. And while their Benzene isn't out of it yet, they've got a very, very long way to crawl. Please tell me you're trying for a tier 3, because that could 100% pull you back in this game if you get the lucky shot. He's trying for it. Yep, alright, there it is. So we have a tier 3 on the field. It is vulnerable to being sniped right now, because there's... Uh, their Benzene's base is a little holy. By that I mean there's a clean shot clear through NC Rigodaisher's last remaining base. Which could just take out the tier 3 and with it any hope of something going wrong. Um, I don't know if Pro-Aim notices nor cares to react to this. The thing about tier 3s... Okay, so they did notice, as we do have tier 3 defenses. The problem with tier 3s, especially in more standard maps like this, is that they are horrendously inaccurate. As in, even if Pro-Aim didn't react or care about the tier 3 at all, uh, that probably wouldn't make a difference in the game. However, there is a chance that it lands and crits something. Like, I don't know. Uh, flying down right here. S missing all this stuff. Sniping this battery. Breaking this strut. Causing everything to collapse in upon itself. And the whole base comes crumbling down. That can happen. It just has about an equal chance of it happening as it as it is landing literally anywhere else. Across most of this map. Which is not a great experience um, for a weapon. Like that's not usually how you want your weapons to, to function. But there is a chance, and Debensi's looking to try that chance. Uh oh, that this that laser shot right there puts puts Debensi on a timer. Typically, when you're looking to break in a break an expansion like this, you want to disconnect and then ignite it, because once the fire starts burning, it doesn't stop until the person reconnects, and then. Um, as long as you can keep them from reconnecting, like right now, then the fire will burn through and destroy everything, and with it, the your entire hope of ever reclaiming that position literally goes up in flames. Alright, Debensi, now is your one shot, one opportunity to make this count. Uh, they don't they don't have enough energy to fire the weapon. Um, well, that's awkward. Nuke defense saved. Reopening the doors, allow the wind to fly through. Oh ho ho! They got off one shot, which I think is a little shallow. Um, but as you can see, there's that weakness. It goes, it overpens and lands directly in the tier three, and with it, Derbensine's about last hope. Was that? Huh? It didn't come back down. It must have been not shallow enough and went off the map. Awkward. Either way, uh, Team Pro Aim has managed to break their Benzene's final expansion, and with it, any hope of their Benzene keeping up with the repair bill. And that will be it. Ladies and gentlemen, Team Pro Aim becomes victorious in this best of three and moves on to the next round.